Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Mm, thank you for stopping by today to see what I wanted to talk about and share. If you're new here, I'm Carrie. I'm a matchmaker and a dating coach in the Chicago area. And there's a big old playlist on my channel called Dating Advice. Also a smaller one called Dating Quick Tips. But Dating Advice has lots and lots of episodes that I've created over the last you know, year and a half or so. And uh, you might want to, if you're new here, peruse and see if something strikes you because lots of topics we've covered in this time. There's lots of first date things we talk about, being your best for a first date, all aspects of first dates. And today I wanted to talk about when you're in that first stage of dating, just eking your way into that second stage, whatever that might look like for you. Are you sabotaging this? Are you doing it to yourself? Have you done it before and you see it coming again? You're about to do it. Stop and let's talk about it first. That's what we're talking about right Today. now. Five things that are indicative of you sabotaging this new relationship. And the first one is going too fast. Zoom it into stage two from stage one. I don't know what stage two looks like for you or for him. What type of changes are actually going to happen? Maybe it's talking about exclusivity, maybe it's moving in together, I don't know. But whatever that is for you, if you're moving things along at a pace that feels too quick to the other person because you're not checking in to see what they're feeling as well, that could be definitely a sign that you're sabotaging. I also want to warn you here that in these early stages of dating, to be aware and beware of seeing in this person because it's so soon seeing what my mother calls the perfect stranger i think she uses the term incorrectly but it's what i've heard all the years growing up when i was dating and or meeting people in general it applies but she considers the perfect stranger somebody that because they are a stranger you give them all the benefit of the doubt and you just assume that everything you see is positive and they are perfect Therefore, they are the perfect stranger. And I think that's something that a lot of us do, even on the dating app swiping, that we'll see somebody and we attribute qualities to them, not knowing them at all, based on pictures or something they said. And when you're actually dating, things that you know about them, you fill in the gaps of things you don't know with what you want them to be to make the perfect stranger. So beware of that in the early stages. That's also a way that you can sabotage it because of course you're going to be let down when the real person shows through and you find out they're not perfect and like who is to speaking of filling in all those blanks with the things you want and crave and desire and hope that this person is I want you to actually listen to this person hear the things they're saying and don't misconstrue or ignore warning signs or signals that maybe they're not where you are romantically or not thinking along the same lines you are. I've heard so many women say that, yeah, he told me he didn't want kids, but I knew that he changed his mind once he fell in love with me. Or he said he was never going to get married. Or he said that we were just friends and women are hoping to change things. So I want to remind you for number two, that people tell you who they are. You just need to pay attention. You just need to listen. You just need to watch. They will be honest with you. They will tell you, they usually do. They're usually not deceptive. They tell you and you don't want to hear it and you make up your mind to do something different. And that is a way that you can sabotage this relationship by not paying attention. Number three, never, in the middle of a day, if you have to have a talk with somebody later in the evening or once you're together, say, we need to talk. Just a little something I was going to throw in there. But usually that preface, we have to talk, is leading to a conversation about the relationship. And in the early stages of dating, very often that's a woman or a man sometimes asking, where is this going? What do you, where do you see this leading? What are your intentions towards me? And I think if you're in your 50s, which is who this channel is geared to, in particular, if you're in your 50s, why do you need to know exactly? If you're one of my followers who are 25 to 35 and you're looking to start a family, you're on a mission. I get it. You want to start a family of your own. You got to rule out people who don't want the things you want for a lifetime of children and careers and family. But if you're 50, 
what's the reason you have to like nail this down and know where this is going immediately. Just live and let live and let this play out in its own time. As long as there's no deal breakers or red flags that are popping up and you're enjoying somebody's company, having a nice time, person communicates well and at the interval that you would most like, then there's no reason to stop this in its tracks and ask that question, where is this going? It's going where it's going and you're enjoying it, so just go for the ride. Which leads us to the next one, which is why do we feel like we need to define this relationship? Don't define it. Let it go. Let it be what it's going to be. Let it breathe. Maybe ask yourself why you're trying to lock this person down and define this relationship. Is it because you're feeling a little bit desperate? Is it feeling like you're needy? Do you need to tell other people that this is my boyfriend or this is my fiance? You can tell people whatever you want. They usually don't care. <laughs> What's that phrase I always liked? You wouldn't worry so much about what people think of you if you understood how seldom they do, something like that. But people aren't worried about who you're dating or what you've labeled this relationship. So just live in the moment, be present, and soak up every minute of great company with somebody who you truly enjoy and are getting to know even better. Don't let your insecurity get the better of you and sabotage your relationship. Let it be, let it breathe, let it live. Que sera, sera. The next thing you may be doing that could be sabotaging your relationship is thinking that men think like women. Men and women think differently. And men like to move in relationships typically, not all, I'm not making any sweeping generalizations here, but they like to take things a little bit more slowly. They don't want to be rushed. And actually not rushing them tends to lead to a better result for you if you do want a long-term committed relationship and allowing them to feel they're making the choice all along the way, that they're choosing you, that it's going at their speed and they are making the decision to see you, that always works out better because nobody feels like they had a woman rushing them along and hurrying the pace and things are allowed to happen more on a man's timetable. And their timetable often is very different. So realize they're different and let him set the pace. Don't sabotage it. And this one, the last one, number five, kind of ties in a few things together. It's also about filling in the blanks with the things you don't know and assuming this person is just perfect and putting them on a pedestal. But it also has to do with women being different than men. And what do women do that men don't often. Most men do not overanalyze. They don't analyze every word, every text, every interaction the way that sometimes women do. Not all women, not all men, but stereotypically women are more analytical when it comes to relationships. And it's better for you and the relationship long term if you don't do that. Because while we're great at overanalyzing, we're not always great at guessing or reading minds. <laughs> so I would advise you to not overanalyze and again, be chill, let things happen in their own time. And soon enough, you will know where this is going and you won't have sabotaged it and you'll be able to reap the rewards of being a cool chick who let things happen naturally and didn't ruin it before it even got off the ground. I hope that happens for you. I wish you love, of course. So be brave out there and subscribe to my channel. Hit the ring bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new episode. The thumbs up button lets me know that you enjoyed this episode in particular. And I will look forward to having you back again soon. So thanks for being here today. And until next time, have a good one.